Where is Saban's brains now? That might be an interesting question for some who actually do give a darn. Most likely many others don't give a darn. But I'm here just to tell you what they freaking did and how it's like mind-boggling how this really played out. So I'm going to tell you what they did. And then I'm going to tell you what was supposed to happen and all the other stuff. And most likely all just rehashing of stuff that I already talked about in other videos. But because you guys are lazy, you most likely won't watch it. Let's do this. So Saban's brands. Well, first it was Saban's Entertainment. And then this is where we get some history on this. So we have Saban's Entertainment. And Saban's Entertainment was this the big force that we saw in the 90s. But thanks to Jaime Saban's dumb idea, he bought the family channel. And because of that, that's what wrecked everything. That's what wrecked Fox Kids and everything that was going on. If Fox Kids wasn't going down in decline, I think they might have actually had more goosebumps. But don't take my word for it. So here's the, the real crazy part as it just be the fact of Disney, who is to me kind of was the Kendrick, not Kendrick's, <sighs> Corone, that was her name. So she's basically Corone without the Kendricks ordaining. So Disney got to have the in quotations power. They got the Power Rangers. They did a decent job, but they weren't really ordained by Saban's technically. So they did good. They did, they did decent stuff for Overdrive and uh, um, just some mishandlings and just some stuff that's like, they did a good job. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about the Ranger death. Oh, they couldn't freaking figure out how to save themselves from that crap. So with all that said, Disney basically tried to give a pill to Power Rangers. Oh, good Lord. Saban's came to the rescue. But I think they came to the rescue to save it because they knew that it has value. The only messed up part is that he has grown away from that. So basically, we have the guy who actually is way out of touch with what he previously did because he wasn't with he was without Power Rangers from 2002 all the way to 2010. Let's say 2010. So eight years. He's been eight years clean of Power Rangers and he's older, too. It's like <laughs> there's no freaking way how he could actually capture the same thing that he did before, especially since it was more momentum going on. So he decided to actually most likely do two options. Option A, which he just basically had to bend the knee to freaking Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon had to be a dumbass and say, oh, yeah, well, you can't have a season every year. Maybe you can have a season for two years. It's like, Nickelodeon, you're such a dumbass. Not to mention how Bandai actually was already cool with Disney killing Power Rangers. They were like, yeah, we cool. We cool, kill him, kill him. I'm tired of this shit. And then they phoned it in, gave us the crappiest of crap to end everything. And they were just going to milk it with the crappiness. Horrible, horrible crap. So, Power Rangers got resurrected. I think Bandai America was like, yay. <laughs> because they weren't interested. They weren't really interested in continuing on. They already showed us for themselves that they didn't want to continue on technically, but eventually they got the swing of things, second breath. And then it was very lackluster when it came to second breath, but yet they now have to actually milk it for two years, which is like the toy, the toy line doesn't do that. Sh it lasts for one year. So with all that said, basically my thoughts exactly what will happen if I can actually say it correctly is he decided to create Vortex. Backstory of Vortex is that at first they have four kids and then four kids TV and then four kids the game station and then CW four kids. And that did great because that was just one center area where they actually concentrated stuff. The only missed the part is Disney's a dumbass or should I say um, uh, Sony's a dumbass where it's like 
Sony had to choose between TV or movies. They chose movies instead of TV, which they were doing great. So basically Disney took Spectacular Spider-Man away from them, which was the best show they had. And that's where everything went down the drain for CW for kids. And then eventually they tried to reinvent themselves to Toon's Eye. And then, of course, that's when all hell broke loose of where they got very, very cheap as fuck. <laughs> Extremely cheap. So the reason why I'm saying that is because eventually Vortex took the place of Toon's Eye. The only messed up part is that in the beginning, he definitely put lots of money in for it. Iron Man Armor Avengers, who cares about freaking WWE bullshit? Yu-Gi-Oh! That was another thing that CW still had was Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, until they tried to take it away at one point, which was like, that's some bull. So yeah, they got Yu-Gi-Oh! They got Transformers Prime. It's like they had some decent shows on. Decent. And Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, basically meaning... You know what he was going to do? He was going to eventually have Power Rangers as soon as the, the freaking stupid thing is up. The freaking contract is up. He was going to move Power Rangers to Vortex. The only messed up part is that Vortex died before he could even put Power Rangers over there. And Vortex was already going down because guess what he decided to hire? He decided to hire the people who ran Toon's Eye to continue on. Which is like... Which is why they brought Sonic X back. You freaking... D why are you going cheap? Why the fuck are you going cheap as fuck? That's the real mess of the parts. Like, yeah, they went totally cheap. And it's like, what the fuck? And one casualty had to be Tai Chi Chasers. Another casualty because of the transfer had to be the fact of Address Entertainment. Or may they rest in peace. Who did... Common Rider Dragonite, but of course, Banner America at the same exact time were going cheap as fuck, which means that they, I don't even think Address Entertainment was going to even get any proceeds from the freaking toy line, which that's some bull. And they wanted to do another Common Rider series, but sadly, GoFundMe was like a few years away, or Kickstarter was a few years away. Both of those were few, few bits away to where it's like, they couldn't actually even get crowdfunded because it didn't exist at that point. But if it did, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I would say when it comes to crowdfunding, it would have worked nicely because Kamen Rider Dragon Knight to this day is not available on DVD or Blu-ray unless you live somewhere out in the freaking other country. Like, I think UK or something. It's like, yeah, there's no actual freaking thing for us. So it's like, if you did do it and you did do Kickstarter, then I think the Kickstarters can actually maybe kick in 20 bucks, 30 bucks, and we get Kamen Rider Dragon Knight full on DVD. It's a win-win. Well, not really 20 bucks. I don't even know how much it costs to even make a freaking DVD or anything like that. So that means that most likely it's not even 20 bucks. It's more like 50. But even so, it's such a good show. And we're going to get another one if you kick in that cash. <laughs> yeah, so that died. Um, tai Chi Chasers, they had part two that had to dub. They didn't do it. They said, fuck it. And basically, <laughs> Vortex crashed and burned. And then basically, he now had to go with the part of finding a successor or whatever. And then Hasbro came in and Hasbro took it. So we get to the now thing of where you're going to ask, well, you took all this time to say, where the hell is he? And where everything is, where the hell is he? So for the past year plus, he actually is doing R-rated movies now. He is actually in association or helping produce R-rated movies. Here are a few that you can actually check out now that you will most likely be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, he said, fuck kids shows, fuck you, fuck Power Rangers, fuck the fans, fuck all y'all shit, I'm out. And it's like, he's going R-rated, baby. He had Gun Akimbo was actually associated with him. Fat Man is associated to him and Breach, the new movie. He's part of it, too. Not to mention you even get to see his freaking damn logo. So Saban's Films, that is the next 
thing that came out of it. So no more Saban's Entertainment, of course, has been dead. Saban's branch, he closed down. Now we get Saban's Films. And that's where he lies now. It's amazing how the storytelling everything, if he actually, it's like, I don't know. How does this freaking work where it's like, you have some good storytelling going on now. How the frick can you not put it on Power Rangers? It's like, yes, I know, not R-rated, but can you still have the serious good storytelling in Power Rangers? It's like you did it from, when did he actually start getting serious? I think in space all the way to Wild Force, it got real. It got serious. It got some serious moments. So it's like, yeah, I mean, the other times it was serious moments, but it really got serious to the point of where there's no slapstick or anything. And it's like, <laughs> you're telling me you couldn't do that for freaking Samurai, Mega Force, Super Mega Force? Dino Charge was kind of okay, actually. And Ninja Steel, what the fuck? Ninja Steel, really? You couldn't do that for that? <laughs> and Beast Morphers, I think, is 50 50. But still, it's kind of messed up where it's like, this is where he is now. And he's serious and it's good storytelling. How in the world did he not actually figure out how to do that sh when he actually had Zabon brands? It's beyond me.